Hello and welcome to another episode of Optics Trade Debates. My name is Andras. Hello, my name is Theodor. Today we're going to compare two pocket binoculars categories, that is 8x20 and 10x25. Yeah, it's a um, very common question. Which one should I take? And it's probably one of the most difficult one to answer because the differences are so small. So I'll go through the general features. Uh, all of these binoculars come from a pocket binoculars category. Uh, they're mostly done 8x20, 10x25, even though there are some variations. Like this one is 8x22 and you have also 10x26, 10x24, so a little bit variation but uh, uh, not big differences. Uh, what are the general features? They're all really small. They're always below 300 grams. Uh, they usually come uh, in a dual hinge configuration. That means that you're able to, to fold it two times. The reason for it is that when completely folded together, they're really compact and you can put them in any pocket. Um, uh, the construction is usually out of plastic. Some better models have magnesium or aluminum housings, but they are even more, a little bit more expensive. They all come with a roof prism Schmidt & Pehan system. Uh, poor prism binoculars of these configurations are really rare, but they do exist. It is 10 by 26 uh, Poro uh, prism. Uh, it's made by Vortex and a couple of other manufacturers. It is, however, true that with for a prison design, they are not really that small anymore. They already come into the, into the category of compact binoculars, not pocket binoculars, because let's say 8 by 26 with a poro prism, it's really, really hard to put in any pocket. Um, the price points, they start really low at 50 euros. The best binoculars of this class go up to, let's say, 800, 900 euros. So a little bit narrower price range compared to other categories. The eyepieces are, I can see, both of the rubber type and plastic. Yeah, so you have fold-down type of eyepieces made out of rubber, like this one. And you have uh, twist-up uh, eyepieces like here. So in most cases, only two positions. Even the best, let's say, let's look at there, the Swarovski pocket, if you can uh, hand it to me. Yeah. Even these binoculars have, two positions. have only two positions up and down. You can stop it somewhere in the middle, but it won't hold it the position. It won't hold yeah. the, the, the position. Okay, so these are the general features. The focusing is always in the center. Yeah. Uh, there is really rare instances that there will be individual focusing for each eye. They're almost always the center focusing. It is true, however, that there are many systems of diopter compensation with this type of binoculars. Some have it on, uh, on one of the eyepieces, like this one. And others, like this Leica and uh, Swarovski, have it on, on different positions, either in the inside of the bridge or around, uh, around the tube, like on this Leica. Here you have the diopter yeah, compensation. So, so it is, you can find many different uh, technical solutions for diopter compensation with this type of binoculars. Okay, so on Russia, I went through general features. Yeah. Can I you go... Yeah, please. I would like to talk about suitability now. Yeah. Um, first, I would like to say that this binoculars, because of their compact size, they can be st stored in every pocket. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they're, they're um, most suitable for leisure activities. I would say if you go cycling, if you go, I don't know, on a walk, you can just put the binoculars in your pocket and then you have it ready at yeah. hand anytime. Or safari. Or safari yeah. or anything like that. You can even take them to the mountains, even though the compact category is more popular. It's better viewing yeah. experience is better. Right? And uh, because pocket binoculars generally aren't that, I would say, aren't the, don't offer the most comfort when viewing. You have mm. to, um, because the eyepieces are quite narrow, yeah. you often have to hold them slightly away from your eye. Yeah, because if you no press contact. onto your eyes, you will experience some discomfort. Yeah. And uh, they do have short eye reliefs. So... Glasses users won't be won't be happy satisfied with, with yeah. using them. Yeah, you should go for bigger lenses. They are perfect for for uh, presents for kids for children. Yes, because, they're really, because really of the narrow eyepieces, they will fit better. Yeah, very good on the small eyes of children. So we do have a separate video where we compare compact versus uh, pocket binoculars. Also, we have a buying guide of compact binoculars. And there we also explain a couple of differences between pocket and compact. 
binoculars. We forgot one use case for these binoculars, which is also very common. This is cycling. Yeah. You just put them in your backpack, go on a, on a cycle, and then uh, you can just use them anywhere where you wish. Okay, uh, if I go through the differences between the 8 time magnification pocket binoculars and 10 times I'll put this one here because it's from the same series, Yeah, only different magnification. So if you go through the build and size, you can see that in, in immediately with all 10 time magnification binoculars in this class, they are a little bit taller. So a bit longer than 8 times. When it comes to weight, the difference is maybe 20, 30 grams, which is really not that much. You won't notice it yeah. Yeah, in, in your pocket. If it has 220 or 250 grams, it's almost the same. Uh, also in size, except for the length, everything else is really, really similar. So when, when you fold them together, they're almost equal in size. Uh, in price wise, let's say five to 10% difference uh, um, Usually the 10 time magnification binoculars are about 10% yeah. more expensive. Uh, I don't understand why, but it is like this on the market. Uh, when we talk about the optical experience, the field of view, usually uh, pocket binoculars don't have wide field of views. So with 8 time magnification, you get around 110 meters of field of view. With 10 time magnification, you get around 90 meters of field of view. Low light performance, none of them performs well in low light. These are really purely daytime binoculars, even though A time is better uh, for viewing in, I would say, dimmer conditions at uh, dusk or dawn. Uh, they cannot be compared with any other category of binoculars in, in dusk and dawn. In terms of comfort, um, A time magnification is a little bit more comfortable. A little bit bigger uh, exit pupil, maybe one millimeter more of eye relief, so the comfort is better with eight time magnification than with 10 time magnification. Uh, and I would say this is pretty much it when we come to differences. Everything else is more or less the same. So it's really hard to decide which one to take uh, either eight time or 10 yeah. times. This is the reason why we get so many questions about this. So Andras, when should we take the 10 time magnification? I would say that if, if you're looking for Higher, if you want higher magnifications, then it will do better when you are observing details. Yeah. Uh, for if you will get a naturally a shorter, narrower field of view, but you will have more details. Yeah. Also, you will you will have a little bit of more. But the height. size, it's yeah, the size is really, really, yeah. really small differences. So only the magnification plays a role here. If you want a wider field of view, go for the eight times. If you want more details, go for the ten times. Ten times. That's basically it. Yeah. If you're a novice user, go with an 8 time. Yeah. Always. If you're a novice user, if you're buying it for a present, go with an 8 time magnification. If, however, you are buying it for yourself, something compact, and you have some prior experience with binoculars and really want to see the details, then go with a 10 times magnification. I think this is pretty much it. That's basically it. Yeah. We have some individual reviews also on yeah. various pocket binoculars. You can check one here and, and here. So we have uh, many others also available. Yeah, if you have any additional questions, use the comments below and see you in our next video. Goodbye.